Hello everyone and welcome for a DMS lecture. Today we will discuss on design of IC engine. As we previously started uh, the theory uh, with uh, some points we have covered. Uh, we have covered classification, comparison between uh, internal engine and external engine. Then we have discussed comparison between S and CI then main components of the CI, then we have seen a cylindrical cylinder liner and cylinder head. Then we have discussed the main aspect of the piston, then piston material, okay, piston head and crown, piston rings, why the piston rings are used. We also discussed about the piston skirt. So piston skirt we have discussed. Now before going to the piston pin, uh, there is one more thing. Uh, there are some ribs which is provided inside the piston. Uh, the main purpose of these uh, reinforcing ribs, uh, generally uh, the four to six number of ribs are provided inside the piston. But why? Why it is necessary? The connecting side thrust is transmitted to piston skirt through the piston pin boss. In the in order to the distribution, this uh, thrust load property on the piston skirt and to avoid the distortion of the skirt, the reinforcement ribs are provided from the center line of the piston pin and extended around the piston skirt. Second reason is a triangular ribs are also provided from the piston head up to the boss of the piston pin. This ribs helps carry the gas load from the piston head to the boss of the piston pin and it, they can strengthen the piston head. And third important uh, reason, the ribs help to carry the heat from the piston head to the piston barrel and hence the piston rings. So heat flows out through this direction. It is direct, it's do not directly transfer to the piston rings. It, the temperature is transferred from head head to the piston barrel and piston barrel to the uh, piston rings. So because of the, these reinforcing ribs, uh, the head and piston barrel is connected. Then there are few limitations. The extension of the ribs up to the piston head may be constrained of free expansion of piston head which may lead to the higher thermal stresses induced therefore the instead of extending the ribs up to the piston head the piston pin boss is extended right up the up to the piston head you can see into the figure that that is shown over here okay so rather than uh, providing a direct connection or adding material in between these two, uh, we have showing, just a minute, we have added material over here, okay? So here the boss is extended rather than adding this much material, okay? We are just added over here so that the strength part is get uh properly considered then the what basic requirement or what is the thick uh, dimensions of that if the piston thickness of the piston head is a six or less then the reinforced uh, ribs are not required which we have already discussed and it is more than the six mm then the number of uh, ribs we are using varies from four to six. Okay, so next point that is a uh, next part from the piston that is a piston pin. 
It is linked between piston and connecting rod. The thrust developed by the expanding gas is transmitted from piston to the connecting rod through this piston pin. Basic material we are used for the piston pins are plain carbon steel, alloy steel, which containing nickel, chromium, and the molybdenum. The pin is hardened and grounded and it's turned into the high grade bronze brush. So, as it is connector between the small eye or big eye, uh, connecting between the piston and the connecting rod. So, it carries a different forces. So, that's why it is properly uh, given. This piston pin uh, we are generally uh, designed for bearing pressure, the bearing pressure, then the direct shearing stress and bending stress. So we, with these stresses, we are generally designed the piston pin. The connection between pin, uh, okay. Now there is a sar clip is uh, we are using that uh, normally uh, made up of uh, with the full floated type or semi floated type the piston pin is uh, free to turn both side uh, the piston boss and the bush of the small end of the connecting rod the end movement of the piston should be secured by means of that spring circlips which is shown in figure in order to prevent the pin from touching and scoring to the cylinder liner. In the semi-floating type, the piston pin is either free to turn in and in... <laughs> so here you can look at the piston pin is secured to the small end of connecting rod by using lock nut screw. Okay, uh, from in second one, it is directly fitted uh, with the help of uh, locking screw is fitted uh, in between piston pin and the boss, piston boss. Okay, so from these two figures, I hope everybody's understood that how we can fix the location of the piston pin. The piston pin should be designed for the maximum gas load or inertia force of the piston, whichever is, large, whichever is the larger. The bearing area of the piston should be about equally divided between the piston pin and bosses and the connecting rod bushing. Thus, the length of the pin in the connecting rod bush will be 0.4 times of the cylinder bore or piston diameter, which allows for the end clearance of the pin etc. The outside diameter of the piston pin is determined by equating the load on the piston due to the gas pressure and the load on the piston pin due to the bearing pressure at the same end of the connecting rod bushing. Then there is a one more thing which we are not yet discussed that piston clearance. There is a relevant sliding motion between the piston and cylinder liner. Therefore, the diameter of the piston has marginally lesser than that of the bore of this cylinder liner. Why it is why the piston clearance is necessary? The adequate clearance needs to be provided between the piston and liner due to the two reasons. First, thermal expansion of the piston. Due to the high temperature of the gas, the thermal, uh, thermal expansion of the piston takes place. If the adequate clearance is not provided, the thermal expansion of the piston may lead to the seizing of the piston. In addition to the providing the piston clearance, the thermal expansion of the piston also be counted by providing the taper on the piston barrel side. Second reason, distortion of the piston under the load. The distortion uh, may be takes place under the load near the piston pin bosses if the adequate clearance is not provided. 
this may lead to the seizing of the piston as usual because of that stresses in addition to the providing the piston clearance the distortion of the pin under the load can also be and count, uh, counted by relieving the side of the piston near to the piston pin and providing the piston slightly oval shape so that it can acquire a particular cylindrical shape when it expands now what are the recommended piston clearance if the excessive clearance is provided it will lead to the damaging the phenomena it's called as a piston slap when we are providing excessive piston clearance there is a some piston damage occurs and that phenomena is called as a piston slap if the clearance is too less then it leads to the piston seizing so generally uh, the piston barrel clearance for cast iron is 0 0.005 to 0.007 mm a uh, 7 mm, 7 it times of the piston diameter in aluminium it is 0 0.01 up to dd about the piston skirt uh, in cast iron material it is 0 0.01 to 0 0.0015 times of the a piston diameter and in case of aluminum it is 0 0.02 0 0.002 to 0 0.0025 times of the diameter next one connecting rod connecting rod uh, what is the function of the connecting rod the primary function of the connecting rod is to transmit attractive force from the piston to the crank and vice versa and some cases it is a secondary function is to carry the lubricating oil from the crank pin to the piston pin through the drill hole which is already initially drilled to satisfy the second function so the basic Parameters discussed with the reference of the connecting rod design is the construction, then the material of the connecting rod, then loads acting on the connecting rod, then design of the connecting rod body, and the design of the other parts of the connecting rod body. If you look at in a figure, the main components are small end, that is I end, they, it have a small end with having a small end bearing, then shank or body then big end or big eye bearing bearing uh, end is there bearing is there then big end bearing cap is there okay and the cross section which is made uh, from eye section generally okay the parts which we have discussed the body of the connecting rod consists of three parts small end that is I end, big end and the body. Small I or you can say small end of the connecting rod is completely integrated with the body of connecting rod and carry the piston pin bearing. The connecting rod is connected to the piston through the small end with the help of piston pin or gudgeon pin. About the big end, the big end of the connecting rod is usually split into the two segments to take the crank pin bearing shell the connecting rod is connected to the crank through the big end with the help of crank pin about the body when we discuss about the shape of the body the shape of the body of the connecting rod of the small end and big end it is a tapered shape from the small end to big end you can look at in the figure cross section of the connecting rod for the low speed engine the low speed engine the section is usually cylindrical elliptical rectangular the larger dimension of the cross section is in the plan of the rotation for high speed 
in the high speed engine as the weight uh, we need to reduce the major uh, is reduction in the weight is an, a major objective so the i section or h section is commonly used but generally we are using i section for better resistance against the bending as well as buckling then about the l by d ratio length versus uh, diameter ratio as the l by d ratio of the connecting rod is less the shorter connecting rod we can design uh, which reduce the overall height of the engine and which makes the engine compact however the shorter length of the connecting rod greater in angulatory which increase the side thrust of the piston on the cylinder liner in addition to that because of the greater angularity of the connecting rod the length of the piston skirt uh, has been shortened so to avoid the contact between the piston skirt and the body of the connecting rod if the l by d l by l by d ratio or length to radius ratio is large it means that we need to design connecting rod in a large size which reduce the angularity effect between of the connecting rod lesser the angular angularity leads to a, redux, a reduction in the side thrust of the piston on the cylinder liner in addition to that a lesser the angularity allows us uh, for a piston with the long skirt length however the long connection uh, rod increases the overall height of the engine so commonly we are selecting length divided by radius l by r or l by d ratio sorry l by r ratio uh, up to 4 to in between 4 to 5 for high speed engine and uh, sorry it's in between 4 to 5 for high speed engine the l by r ratio should be lesser than 4 and low speed engine for low speed engine it is uh, greater than 5 okay now next one about the materials and the properties materials of the connecting rod the properties of connecting wrong material the connecting rod is subjected to fluctuating stresses the most of the connecting rods are manufactured by drop forging process the material used for connecting rod should have a very high fatigue strength and resilience the basic materials which is allows uh, for manufacturing the connecting rod the medium carbon steel that is 40 c8 or 45 c8 with uh, for low speed and light duty engines alloy steels 40 cr1 40 ni3 30 ni4 cr1 such type of materials we are preferring for high speed and heavy duty load engines now the various loads which is acting on the connecting rod are three types of load are generally acting on the connecting rod first force due to the combined effect of the gas pressure inertia of reciprocating masses and the friction at the piston second one the bending moment due to the inertia of connecting rod and third one the forces due to the friction of the piston pin and the crank pin bearing so these are the main sources of the forces which is uh, applied on the uh, piston so the forces due to the combined effect of the gas pressure inertia reciprocating masses and the friction are varies and initial uh, so uh, for properly we need to calculate
now next in a very important point to of is the lubrication of the engine the bearing at the two ends of the connecting rod are either splash lubricated or pressure lubricated and the big end bearings is usually splash lubricated with the small end bearing is a pressure lubricated what is the splash lubricated the cap at the big end is provided with the deeper or spout and set an an angle in which a, uh, in such a way that when the connecting rod moves downward the spout will deep into the lubricating oil containing into the sump the oil is forced up uh, up the spout and then go to the big end bearing now when the connecting rod moves upward a splash of the oil is pro produced by the spout this splash up the lubricate uh, lubricant and find its way to the small end bearing through the widely chamfered holes provided on the upper surface of the small end and in case of pressure lubrication system the lubricating oil is fed under the pressure as name itself indicates to the big end bearing through the holes drilled in the crankshaft crank wave and the crank pin from the big end bearing the pressure is fed to small end bearing through these uh, drilled holes uh, in the shank of connecting rod in such cases the small end bearing is lubricated by the oil scrap from the wall of the cylinder liner by using oil rings or you can say oil scrap rings now as we discuss the forces acting on uh, the connecting rod the force due to the gas pressure and inertia due to the connecting rod of inertia that is a bending force and due to the friction of the piston rings and the piston and forces due to the friction of piston pin bearing and the crank pin bearing now cross section of the connecting rod as we discussed the basic cross section is uh, for high speed engine ri and the low speed engine you can uh, vary it but uh, as per the calculation uh, it is proved that the cross section of the connecting rod should be i then the dimension of the crank pin big end and the piston pin at the small end since the dimension of the connecting pin at the big end and the piston pin which is known as a gudgeon pin or a twist pin, uh, pin at the small end are very limited therefore it's fairly high bearing pressure how uh, have to be allow at the bearing of these two uh, pins the crank pin at the big end has a removable precise bearing shell of the brass or bronze or steel with the thin liner that is uh, up to the 1 mm diameter 1 mm thickness or less than that, than that uh, which is uh, made of of bearing metals that is uh, tin lead bibet copper lead in such uh, out of that bibet is a more preferable material on the inner surface of the shell the allowable bearing pressure on the crank pin depends upon the many factors such as the material of the bearing viscosity of the lubricating oil method of lubrication and the space or clearance limitation the value of bearing pressure may be taken as 7 newton per mm square to 12.5 newton per mm square depending upon the material and the method of lubrication which is we are using in the design the piston pin bearing is usually a phosphor bronze bush of uh, thickness up to the 3 about the 3 mm and which allows the bearing pressure which can take up to the 10.5 newton per mm square to the 15 newton per newton per meter square since the maximum load on uh, to be carried by the crank pin and the piston pin bearings which is maximum force uh, to the connecting rod therefore the dimension of these two pins are determined for the maximum force in the connecting rod which is 
taken equal to the maximum force on the piston due to the gas pressure. Uh, in this case, we are neglecting the inertia forces. Now the size of the bolts for securing the big end caps. The bolts and the big end cap are subject to the tensile forces which corresponding to the inertia force of the reciprocating part at the cap uh, at the top dead center of the exhaust, exhaust stroke. The thickness of big and end cap the thickness of the end cap may be determined by treating the cap as a beam which is freely supported at the cap uh, bolt center and loaded by the inertia forces at the top end center on the exhaust stroke at the time of exhaust stroke. This load is assumed to be act in between uniformly distribution load and the centrally concentrated load. So how to calculate it we will discuss with the proper numerical so that you can understand uh, it uh, very properly okay so thank you very much for joining i hope uh, the basic uh, concept of the designs of the ic engine is to be cleared now because we have to design a main components of the ic engine okay so that's why we are discussing how to um, design the basic components uh, related theories materials and the basic empirical relations which we have discussed in this lecture okay so thank you very much uh, i suggest you can um, check the description box a similar uh, this presentation has been uh, the link of this presentation i'm sharing in the description box okay so thank you very much for joining this lecture.